Number one. How many odd three-digit numbers are there? Well, once again, I didn't specifically say whether it involves repetition or not. Usually, if they don't say, you assume you are allowed to repeat. How come we're late, sir? Please. Thank you. If you look at number one, it doesn't specifically say with or without repetition. Probably if they don't say you can't repeat, you probably are allowed to. Because it's not clear here, again, Blaine, I'm going to take both answers. <coughs> so if I'm allowed to repeat, an odd number has to end in a 1, a 3, a 5, a 7, or a 9. And I'll visualize my little Scrabble bag. 5, 6... Seven, eight, so there's all the numbers in the Scrabble bag. How many choices do I have here? Five. And because I'm saying you can repeat, we'll put the number back into the bag, give the bag a shake. How many numbers do I have here? Nine. Why not ten? It okay, can't start with zero. Put the numbers back in, give it a shake. How many choices do I have here? Ten. So if you did 450, I would accept that. Now, if we're not... repeating what would it be well you would still have five choices because it's got to end in an odd number and let's suppose you picked a five for the very very end how many choices do I have for the first number now uh, eight not nine because I can't start with a zero so let's suppose I put a one right there <coughs> how many choices do I have now eight uh, 40 times eight 320 I would take either of those answers because the question isn't clear. Oh, by the way, if there's that many odd numbers, grand total, and if there's that many that don't repeat, how many repeat? I think 130 must have like two of the same number in them because this was all of them, including the repeats. This was not including the repeats, whatever the difference is, what's left over. How many ways are there to arrange the letters of the name Duick? 5 factorial, 120. How many ways are there to arrange four letters of the name Duick? You could go four blanks, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or it's also 5 permutate 4, and I think you get 120 again, don't you? Oh, van der Velden. Okay, now we're giving you a challenge. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 factorial all over. Two V's. Two N's. Two D's. Three E's. Ugh. I'm going to go 12... Factorial, and I'm just going to go div divide it by uh, 8 times 6. Is that right? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 factorial is 6. Faster typing. Uh, and you get, wow, uh, 9,979,200. And this brings us to our typo. What I should have done is I should have made, instead of having it be choose three, it really should have been choose two. If you have a choose three here, I first of all said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll put it into the permutate equation. So it's going to be the top thing divided by the top minus the second thing factorial. What is n minus one minus three if I tidy that up? n minus 4. So I got n minus 1 factorial over n minus 4 factorial. Common sloppy mistake, by the way, Chelsea. Kids forget to drop the 210 down. And then when they end up here with the equation, they forget there's a number there. And so their quadratic won't factor because they've forgotten to subtract the number over. Trust me, I've seen that happen a gazillion times as well. So just don't be sloppy. It's an equation. It's not a simple It's an equation. Now, when you do this, I said, which one's bigger, n minus 1 or n minus 4? n minus 1 is larger than n minus 4, so I started to expand it. And I got n minus 4 factorial, and I actually ended up with an x cubed, 
or an n cubed equation. I foiled it out very, very quickly, minus the 210 over, and that's why this is a typo. You can solve this using Math 11. Remember doing the root, uh, rational root theorem, the remainder theorem, the factor theorem, and polynomial division or synthetic division and all that. Or you can use the polysmoke program that I've given some of you on your graphing calculator. That works fine too. But an x cubed equation like this is not considered fair game for Math 12. So here's the deal. If you ended up with this equation and you got 8 as an answer, you can give yourself two bonus marks. If you just guessed your way to eight, I'll give you one bonus mark, I guess. Okay? That number right there, that three, should have been a two. If it was a two, you'd get a lovely quadratic. There is going to be some kind of a factorial equation on your test. And your test is going to be a week from yesterday. No, you're block D. Your test is going to be a week from today. Tutorial Monday after school, and I'll send an email out tonight as well. Okay. Number six. To simplify number six, I said, I'm pretty sure these two go together and these two go together. So in my mind, I drew a line kind of separating them. And I said, 102 factorial is bigger than 100. This is 102 times 101 times 100 factorial. The 100 factorials cancel. Then I said, which one's bigger, n minus 4, n minus 2? n minus 2 is larger than n minus 4. So I started to expand the bottom, and I got an n minus 4 cancel. Cancel. So I ended up with 102 times 101 divided by n minus 2 times n minus 3. I did multiply the 102 times 101 together to get 10,302 over that. I gave one mark for the top, one mark for the bottom. So there is going to be a simplify some type of weird factorial expression. It'll be multiple choice on your test, though. <coughs> I like number seven. I like number... Well, honestly, I like every question on here except for the typo in number five. But I still like the idea of number five, but with a two instead of a three. You're going to see almost every one of these in the future in some variation. So committee question. The first one says, how many ways can you select a president, a secretary, and a treasurer? This is not a bucket question because they're not talking about different groups. And it looks like the order matters because if you pick first, you're the president. If you pick second, you're the secretary. If you pick third, you're the treasurer. So I said this is 11P3, or you could have gone three blanks, 11 times 10 times 9. This time I felt comfortable using the shortcut. I was pretty sure I was right. 990. Any three people for the committee. So if all you want to know is whether someone's on or off the committee, you don't care about what position they're in, or oh, order doesn't matter, that's 11 choose three, which was 165. And then if they break it up into groups and order doesn't matter, that's when I go to this bucket. And I draw this every time because it takes all of one second. So I said girls and boys, four girls, seven boys. They want me to choose two, want me to choose one, and the equation just pops right out, 42. And the last one, at least, what does at least one girl mean? What are the cases that include at least one girl? One or two or three. So I made a little heading. I got organized. I used the same bucket from up here. I didn't redraw it, although on a test I'd probably redraw it just so I didn't make a sloppy mistake. But I got 130. Oh, and remember, Kellen, to type this, I said, don't type this whole thing in. Do the first one. Hit enter and then go second function enter and just change that number and that number to get your next term. It's way faster. Although, I'll be honest, I actually skipped this one because I'd just done this one on the previous line. That will often be the case on these questions. Often you'll have done one of them on the previous line. I gave one mark if I saw this line here and then one mark for the answer. Okay. Turn the page. Order matters in a permutation. Does not matter in a combination. Can I abbreviate those as perm and comb? I guess. I probably wouldn't on a test, though. License plates. Pause while I 
take care of my late student. License plates. If repetition is allowed, it's four letters, and you're putting the letters back into the Scrabble bag, so it's going to be 26, 26, 26, 26. I said that's 26 to the fourth. Faster typing. And it's 10, 10, 10. I said that's 10 to the third. And I got 456,976,000. And I believe Toronto, like Ontario, I believe has gone to four and three. <coughs> BC looked at that, and instead they decided to allow letters and numbers to interchange. Will Ontario run out of license plates anytime soon if they can have 456,976,000? It'd be fine. Even if you remove the ones that you can't have because they're either bad words or I'm guessing nobody has AAA000 or maybe the Premier does, right? What if repetition is not allowed? Now, if repetition is not allowed, that's actually the shortcut for that was a permutation. You could have drawn four blanks and three blanks and gone 10, 9, 8, and 26, 25, 24, 23. But a permutation was what we were doing when we were not allowing repetition. Either of those will give you 258,336,000. Sorry, 258, <coughs> and the last one was a pathway. It was a regular pathway question. I got 56. Oh, and remember, there is a shortcut. Since 3 and 5 add to 8, you could have just gone 8, choose 3. That doesn't work for 3D, but it works for regular pathway problems. Can you give yourself a score not out of 18, but out of 16, but you might get the 2 mark or the 1 mark bonus? Add them up. Pass them forwards, please. Pass them inwards, please, I mean. We're going to finish off the unit today. Can you open your workbooks, please, to page 412? Yep. Yep. I'm going to finish off the whole lesson because that might answer the question, and then we'll tackle it from there. Okay, page 412, and then shush. So last day we looked at the very impressive sounding fundamental, no, not fundamental counting principle. We looked at the binomial expansion theorem. It was a great shortcut, and first we learned the pattern if you just wanted to foil something out. So we said if you were foiling that out, that 6 there told you, a to the 6th, A to the 5th, A to the 4th, A to the 3rd, A squared, and oh, that B, B to the 0, B to the 1, B to the 2, all the way up to B to the 6th. And then that 6 there said the coefficients were going to be 6 choose 0, 6 choose 1, 6 choose 2, etc. And then we also did say, and the reason I said turn to this page here, is we said um, you can also find a single term. The last couple of questions that we did, we said, what if you just want to find one term? You don't want to find all of them. Well, you can use this. And we said the formula looked kind of ugly, and the reason was we had to do an adjustment. This k plus 1 here, the reason we had to have a k plus 1 is because we're starting to count from 0 in our chooses. Somewhere we were going to have to do some kind of an adjustment, and it was easier to do an adjustment here than it was to do it here. And so this is a formula that I would put a little box or highlight around. It is on your formula sheet. I am going to ask you to use it on the test, and we're going to practice one or two of these today. And then we're going to go backwards, and we'll have finished off the unit. Okay? So can you turn to page 413? And we're going to do B, 2B together. Now, 2B says find the middle term of that. A lot of people, when they see this, go, oh, middle term's 3. Hang on. Kellen, what's my exponent? 6. Now, do you remember from last day, if your exponent is 6, how many terms are there? Not 6. 7. So if you have 7 things in a row, what's the middle term? It's the fourth one, because you've got 3 in the front and 3 in the back. So here's what I said to you last day. Because they're asking us to find a single term, I always write down this t k plus 1 equals n choose k a to the n minus k 
b to the k. It takes one second. I copy it right from my formula sheet, but I learned over the years, folks, taking the one second to write that down gets rid of most of your sloppy mistakes. And then over off in the margin, my physics 12s will we'll get a defect. I'm going to list my data. So what's sitting where the a is? 2a. What's sitting where the b is? Don't say 5. Negative 5. What's n? This is the easiest one that kids always forget. 6. And then what term number did we want to find? Term number what? So I always write down term 4 right here. And then I can say if I want term 4, what's k? It's not 4. What is it really? Ah, k is going to be 3. And now it's complicated plug and chug. But it is plug and chug. It's going to be and 6, choose k3, 2a to the n minus k in your head, please, 3, negative 5 to the 3. And then... I'm going to go to my calculator and do all of the numbers. So I'm going to go term by term here. Certainly in the front, I'm going to have a 6. How do you get what? What term number do I want? Term number 4. What does k have to be to get a term 4 there? Okay, that's, that's why, Justin, that's why I always write this above. If I do this and I write that, 99% of the time I'll catch, oh yeah, k is not 4, 3. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. On K. Are you K on K? Okay. Yeah. Uh, numbers. So I'm going to go Luke 6, choose 3 times. Now in here, can you see I have a 2 cubed? 2 to the third times. And here I have a negative 5 cubed. Negative 5 to the third. The coefficient is going to be apparently negative 20,000. Did I get all the numbers? I think I did. Yes? Negative 20,000. What about my variables? A to the third, and the second term didn't have a variable in it. And again, Leslie, I'm going to say to you, I defy you to find a better shortcut to do this in one line. Otherwise, you would have had to write out all six Multiply the last two, get an answer. Multiply the third one in, get an answer. Multiply the fourth one in, get a, all the way up till, until you had all six of them and then gather like terms and hope that you hadn't made a math mistake by then and then you'd find the center one. Is that okay? Jogs are memory? Okay. I like number four. I like number four. I like number four. Number four is what we've just done, but in reverse. Number four, here's what they have said. One term of x plus something to the tenth worked out to that. What does that something have to be? Now, the only thing I don't like about this is, what letter did they put right there? A. What letter did we put right there in our binomial expansion theorem? Let's all of us right now make that a B and that a B so we're not confused sillily. Is sillily a word? Okay. Because they're asking us to find one term, I'm going to go term K plus 1 equals N choose K A to the N minus K B to the K. You have to memorize that, Sally? No, it's on your sheet next to NCR and NPR. Make sure you know where it is, though. And I'm going to list what's sitting where the A is. X. What's sitting where the B is? B. What's N? 10. Here's my problem. I don't know what term number this is. 
I don't know what term number this is, except you see that x? That's sitting where the a is. Don't write this down, just watch. I'm going to make a little argument here. I think the first term would have had an x to the 10th in it, because there's a 10 there, and it would be a to the 10th. The next term would be a to the 9th, except a is x. It would have an x to the 9th in it. What would the next term have in it? x to the 8th, right? OK. I think I can figure out what term this is. All of you, get your 10 fingers out. Get to count on your fingers today. Are you ready? You need 10. So the first term has an x to the 10th. Do you agree with me? Because it would be a to the 10th. What would the second term have? x to the then? Then, 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 when does the x to the fourth appear? Term number what? Aha! See how I got that? We counted our way there. And Justin, that's going to let me write this magic thing right here. Term seven. Because as soon as I write term seven, what's k? Six. I don't know of another easy way to get there, aside from counting on fingers. What if the exponent's 20? Well, use your toes, I guess, but figure it. You'll, you'll be able to count. OK? Uh, what's n? 10. Choose. What's k? 6. x to the fourth. Hey, which is what I wanted. See it? Yeah, oh, okay. Good, good, good. B to the sixth. What is 10 choose 6? <laughs> 210? Okay. So I'm going to write this. 210 x to the fourth, b to the sixth. But unfortunately, right now, that is not enough. If I write, don't write this next part down. If I put term 7 right there, I got a problem. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not going to put term 7 right there. I know what term 7 worked out to. They told me. What did term 7 work out to? What I'm now going to do is I'm going to say this was 3,281,250x to the fourth. See, I'm working my way backwards very, very carefully. Why is that so nice? What happens to my x to the fourths? I'll take that. And how would I get the b to the sixth by itself? How would I move this 210 over? Divide by 210. Divide by 210. And I'm going to get, uh, what is that thing divided by 210? Is it 15, 6, 25? OK. I get 15, 6, 25 equals b to the sixth. How do I get rid of a sixth power? Sixth root, which is on my calculator. Oh, in the math submenu. So the final answer, b, is going to be the sixth root of 15, 6, 25. And with an ending like 5, it's going to be 5 or 25. I'm almost certain. Maybe 15, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be 5 or 25. How do I do 6th root? 6th, math. Oh, there's the nth root, option 5, of 15, 6, 25. You know what my original binomial was? x plus 5 to the 10th. That's what would give me, somewhere along the way, a 3,281,250x to the 4th. So I am going to give you one question, and it's going to be a written question, where I ask you to go backwards, where I say, here's what the term worked out to. You'll have to look, first of all, at the exponents and count your way to figure out what term number it is. And then carefully substitute everything into the term equation until eventually you'll end up with something to an exponent equals something. How do you get rid of the exponent? Take the root. 
I like that question. I like that question. I like this question. I like this question. Example five, I like. <clears throat> and then we're done. In fact, then we're done the whole unit. <coughs> Number five has some vocabulary. It says this. Find the constant term, i.e. the term independent of x, and the expansion of that. What the heck do they mean by this? Do you notice this first term has the x's on top? Do you notice the second term has two x's on the bottom? Somewhere along, oh, by the way, what's the overall, what's the exponent? 15. How many terms are there? 16. Somewhere in those 16 terms, because you have some x's on top and some x's on the bottom, somewhere all the x's will cancel. And when all the x's cancel, you know what we call that? A constant term. Or we say, Connor, it's independent of x. So what this question is asking is, what term is it? But first, I need to know when it occurs. You see why? X is on top, X is on the bottom. Somewhere they are going to cancel. Let me say this again. X is on top, X is on the bottom. Somewhere they're going to cancel. That's going to be A. That's going to be B. And what I'm going to try and do is figure out when this term appears. Do the x's cancel on the first term, on the second term, on the tenth term, on the fifteenth term? When do they cancel? And to do that, Kellen, I'm going to look for a pattern. What's the exponent? So I'm going to write a to the fifteenth, a to the fourteenth, b to the one, a to the thirteenth, b squared. Because if I can't spot the pattern after three terms, I probably don't deserve to be in math 12. But I'm going to go even more simplified than that. All I care about right now, Kellen, is finding out when the x's cancel. So even though there's a 2 here, I'm not going to worry about it temporarily. And even though there's a negative 1 on the top, I'm not going to worry about it temporarily. All I want to know is when do the x's vanish. So I'm going to argue that this first term would have an x to the 15th in it. Yes, I know there's a 2 who cares. Because a to the 15th, and there's a, there's a 1 on this x. This second term would have an x to the 14th times it would have a single x squared on the bottom. Because b has an x squared on the bottom. Stephanie, how many x's on top, grand total? How many on the bottom? How many left and where? I wonder, Steph, if the pattern is that these are just going to go down by 3. If that's the case, I can count my way there and figure this out. In other words, I wonder if this is going to be an x to the ninth because it looks like it's going down by 3. So let's find out, let's find out, let's find out. Okay, so um, here I would have an x to the 13th times, and I would have a 1 over x squared squared. How many x's on top, Martin? How many on the bottom when you square the square? How many left and where? Have we spotted the pattern after three examples? It looks like we're going down by threes. Get your fingers out. So the first term, Hannah, is going to have x to the twelfth. Second term is going to have x to the ninth. Then, sorry, fifteenth, x to the fifteenth, I'm sorry x to the 15th, then x to the 12th, then 9, then 6, then 3, then when do I have 0 x's? When do the x's cancel? What term number? Aha! Okay. All that work was to tell myself I'm finding term 6. Oh, but above it, I'm going to write term k plus 1 equals n choose k a to the n minus k 
b to the k. I guess you can go, Michelle. Oh! Okay. Oh, I'll do my little listing my data. Blaine, what's a? 2x, and now we're going to do it properly. I ignored the coefficients because those weren't going to change the exponential pattern, and that's all I was interested in. Now I'm going to do the coefficients. I agree. What's b? Careful, it's not 1 over x squared. Negative 1 over x squared. n is 15. k is... Justin, can you tell me what k is? 5. By the way, I guarantee you, if this is multiple choice, I will have one answer for k equals 6, because that's the most common mistake. And now it's plug and chug. Complicated plug and chug, but plug and chug. It's going to be 15 choose 5, 2x to the 10, negative 1x squared, to the fifth. By the way, Sally, how many x's will I have on top right here? Sorry, I'll scroll up so you can see because Justin's in your way. How many x's will I have right here? How many x's will I have on the bottom right here? How many left? We, we got the right term. It's the constant term. It's the term independent of x. All I need to do now is the numbers. So the numbers, there's going to be a 15 Choose 5 times 2 to the what? What's the exponent on that 2 sitting inside the brackets? 2 to the 10th times negative 1 to the what? What's the exponent sitting on the negative 1? 5. Now, what is negative 1 to the 5th power? Is it negative 1 or positive 1? So I'm going to be a bit lazy, Chelsea. I'm just going to go times negative 1 without adding the because I can do some math in my head. Negative 307, no, negative 3,075,072. 307,50,072. So I'm going to give you one like this. This one probably multiple choice. The previous one, though, definitely as a written question. And that, I think I said to you guys in the last lesson, this shortcut does have a few curveballs. Th th these would be the two kind of curveball-y questions. You need to practice these. So I already assigned number one. And I assigned 7a and 7b and c and e. Is that right? Yeah. And 8. So I think now I can also say try 9b. Now they've told you that you want to find the term that has the x to the fourth y cubed in it. You'll have to use the counting on your fingers trick to figure out when that term appears. When do, Well, what would the first x have on it? x to the what? What would the first x have on it? x to the what? 7. Then? Then, okay, you can figure out when the x to the fourth will appear. Count on your fingers. That'll tell you the term number, and then use tk plus 1 equals n choose k, a to the n minus k, b to the k. 10. Feel free to change that a to a b if you want to, because I just don't like the fact that they put an a where I'm used to having a b. Why well, confuse me? Mm. 10. And I think I already assigned 12. Yes, I did. So there is the homework part one. And I have for you, and unfortunately, you're going to have some homework this weekend, folks. But the goal is for your five-day weekend to have no homework for the Easter weekend. I have for you a big take-home quiz summary of the entire unit as well. And that's what we're going to be going over first thing on Monday. Okay? So let me hand that out.